Lorraine went from living on food stamps to stamping beautiful pictures of food on her website viva50.com. After a bad divorce, a subsequent bankruptcy, and being forced to take care of her children with no help, Lorraine was able to reinvent herself. The people who helped me by giving me a little bit of work or, um, again, clothes for my children or whatever help they gave us, I thought, if these people believe in me. So when things like that happened to me, I thought... Lorraine became an author of 17 books, practices yoga, and is the founder and editor of Viva50.com, a website catering middle-aged women. Let's talk to Lorraine and find out cómo lo hizo. Success. Habitos. Habits. ¿Cómo lo hizo? How do they make it? Descubra las costumbres y secretos de los triunfadores. Discover the habits and the secrets of those who have succeeded. Lorraine, thank you for being with us in Cómo lo hizo. Uh, thank you for having me. So, Lorraine, I'm reading that you are a bilingual author of 17 books. My goodness. Yeah, I think it's actually, and I don't want to sound arrogant or anything, but I think it's um, 18 or 19 published, and then I have a few unpublished works as well. And what the books are about? <laughs> um, I started writing my story when I was uh, 29 and had my first book published at 30 about uh, an eating disorder I had for almost 20 years. And all my other books are about things that I have experienced and overcome or simply experienced. Parenting, eating disorders, self-esteem, being a certain age, and then I have a few works of fiction as well. Amazing. So that means that you kind of write a book every year or every two years? No, not, it doesn't really work that way. It might sound like it, but I I did have around five years that I did not write a book until my latest, um, my latest, which was Tu Mejor Edad, Your Best Age. Interesting. Okay, so let's talk about what you are doing at this point, lo que estás haciendo, porque mm -hmm. tú, eh, nomás como referencia, ¿dónde naciste? En España. En España. <laughs> Good, española, muy bien. So... Tell me about what are you doing at this point? What is Viva 50? Well, right now and for the past almost five years or, yeah, around five years, I manage Viva 50 Media, which is uh, which has two websites. One of them is Viva 50 with words, viva50.com, and the other one is my name, Lorraine C. Ladish. The C stands for Carbonate, which is my Spanish last name. <laughs> <laughs> And um, and so with these two brands, I create content for, I was going to say midlife women, but actually women who want to read empowering content based on somebody who has struggled just like them and done the best possible to overcome the struggles. But I also write for NBC Latino, for AARP for parenting magazines. So I work as a journalist. I work as an influencer, a brand ambassador, and um, and a speaker. Interesting. So tell me, were you always like that or you have to reinvent yourself? Or you went well, to a process of a crisis, something like you, so you were, oh my God, I have to do something to solve my situation or see what I can yes, do with that life. that has actually happened many, many times. <laughs> Starting all over again. <laughs> see, 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 see. Because I started, I have always worked for myself. I'm 55. Y siempre, siempre he trabajado por cuenta propia desde los 18 años. You kid so, in 18 years and freelancing, yeah. independent, yeah. never, yeah. Uh, never employee for some, no. someone. And no. I tried. Yo he intentado tener trabajos de 9 a 5, but I hated it so much. And it didn't matter whether I liked the um, field 
aunque fueran, en, por ejemplo, en editorial o en lo que sea, yo he intentado tener trabajos y es que no podía soportarlo. No me gusta what, what is it? What, what is it that you don't like? I don't like having to be at the same place every day at the same time or doing the same thing every day or having to ask a boss if I can take time off. It's, it's, it's visceral. It is something that when I started out trying to get jobs, I thought it was a disadvantage, but it turned out to be an advantage because I was able to make a living before the internet, before cell phones, before, and work remotely on top of that. So do you think that's a plus factor if you want to be an entrepreneur, that feeling of not wanting to go to the same place every day, nine to five, have to say yes or no, sir, to your well, boss or whatever? I, I would, for me, it was a motivator to work for myself. It's not for everyone. I mean, a lot of people need the structure of a job. They need the steady paycheck. I can live with the uncertainty of endless possibility. All right. But I can deal with it. I like it. It uh, motivates me. It's uh, it's almost like a drug when I get a new job or a new gig. But then I also know that it's over and then I go to the next one. And for me, that's thrilling. I, I enjoy it. Um, but in answer to your question of did I ever have to reinvent myself, well, many times, but the most recent one was 10 years ago when during the recession in the United States, I was making a living doing what I do, but on print. And I was uh, a journalist, but on print uh, newspapers. And I was still writing my books. And I was also doing translations. And that year, I had moved from Spain four years before. I lost my marriage and I lost my source of income. I lost my savings. I lost my money. I lost everything. I, um, I had to sell everything I owned, including family heirlooms, and I found myself being the single mom of two little girls who were then four and seven. And that happens how many years ago, you said? Ten. Ten years. Ten. And you were mm -hmm. where you were living at the time? I was in uh, Florida. Florida. Now I live right. in Sarasota, but then I was living in Naples, Florida, and it was hard because I was 45, and I had, as I just said I had never had a job by choice so I couldn't find a regular job I was basically unemployable and plus in my field there were no jobs and uh, a friend of mine much younger I remember he realized you know how little I had in the house and the girls were complaining that we never had food and he said I porque no aplicas a las estampillas de comida you know the food stamps welfare y yo le dije, ay, pero si eso es para los pobres. Pero claro, me di cuenta de que yo era pobre. Oh, wow. And, um, how how so do you feel about the Because sometimes I ask people, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. when did you realize that you were successful? And you go, you know, you look at, you, you know, the, the roof or the ceiling in your house and say, oh, my God, I made it. But at this point, it's the opposite. The opposite, yeah. The moment that... It was hard porque yo pensaba, claro, los pobres son otros, no soy yo. So it came to you, oh my God, I am poor. Mm -hmm. So it's pobre. Yeah. Wow. Pero pobre de verdad. O sea, pobre de no poder pagar la renta, pobre de que casi me echan del apartamento, pobre de que amigos eh, me daban comida. Y, y el, bueno, que aquí en Estados Unidos la gente no, no lo sabe, creo, pero para cualificar para welfare, para, para que te den food stamps, tienes que tener prácticamente nada. Right. So like, did you really, you, you have to be really, really like not making money. And it was hard, but I had the drive of my two girls. It was the first time in my life. It wasn't the first time that I had, um, you know, to, to start over, but it was the first time I had to do this with two children. And so what do you do? How, how the heck did you figure out what to do? Well, I didn't, it's interesting because. Um, I would like to think that I thought of it, but it was a series of um, fortuitous events that led to me getting back on my feet. When I was really, really down and out, I, well, I've always taken care of myself. I believe people, even when you're in your worst situation possible, especially women, need to take care of themselves. And even when I was I had nothing, I a friend of mine took me to salsa 
dancing classes on Friday, on Thursday and Friday. So I went to those classes and on the dance floor, I forgot everything. Like I forgot I didn't have money. I forgot I was in the middle of divorce. I forgot I was in, you know, the recession. And I just enjoyed myself for, for that time. And sometimes I brought my kids. Sometimes I didn't. And I met people there who um, helped me a lot. And some of them were with material, um, you know, with material help. But there was this one young, much younger than me, businessman. And he said, oh, I saw on Facebook that you're a writer. I need a writer. And so it turns out that he had a website and he needed somebody to write content for his website. And it was a website about coupons because first I thought, oh, yay, I'm going to write again. I'm an author. I'm, you know, and, but he, all he needed was content for a coupon website. And he was going to pay me, I forget if it's $12, 25 one of those, probably 12 per article. And it was not what I wanted to write, of course, but I thought, oh, my goodness, you know, yo escribí eso como si fuera Cervantes. Contenido para una página web, yo no sabía ni que era eso. Ah, and he told me, but the content has to be SEO friendly. Y yo no sabía que era eso. I had no idea what SEO was, which is search engine opt optimization. But, of course. So anyway, I, I started doing that. and. So then, uh, yeah. allow me to interrupt a little bit. So mm -hmm. you were not familiar with the evolution no. of <laughs> of the diverse platforms like uh -uh. online, you know, not, not including social media, of course. Well, I mean, I was online. Facebook was starting. MySpace had been around. I, I was active on those. But I, you know, I had heard about blogging. In fact, I did have a blog that I wrote while I was down and out called um, Diario del Éxito, Success Diaries, which became a book uh, in my worst possible. So you were writing El Diario del Éxito and you were broken. Yeah, but I, I admitted it. I mean, that, that was my way of getting out of bed in the morning and maybe because for me, I, w I was thinking, well, success for some is, you know, having a million dollar company, but sometimes success is getting out of bed when you're depressed. Sometimes success is uh, being able to feed your kids that night. Absolutely. Sometimes success is taking care of yourself when you really don't want to. And I thought, you know, it was a recession. I thought I cannot be the only one who's going through a hard time. But I, what I didn't understand was that you could actually make money writing online. And that's where this uh, young man changed my life because he showed me that there was a way of making money online. So what was the drive inside you? Because you are talking about going to, to salsa uh, mm -hmm. rooms or whatever. <laughs> It has to be something inside you that actually was motivating you to move, to do something. Well, to my children. I your had children. little girls, those niñas, and they were so little. And they, I was an older mom, so they, they were very young and, and they depended on me. And um, also the people who helped me by giving me a little bit of work or, um, again, clothes for my children or whatever help they gave us. I thought if these people believe in me so much, I mean, there was this one woman who I will never forget who hardly knew me. And we met also at the dance studio. And she, when I told her that I had to sell my family's jewelry, like things that my grandparents have give, had given me and my kids, um, she asked me, did they give you good money? Did they have money for this? And I said, well, no, sir, but I paid the rent. And she told me that she had something for me. So to go home with her, And she gave me the two wedding bands and engagement rings of two failed marriages of hers for me to sell and pay my rent. That's absolutely incredible. She was a school teacher, una Latina. She did not have extra money. And so when things like that happened to me, I thought, you know, si esta gente cree en mí, yo tengo que demostrarles que puedo salir adelante. Absolutely. Now, there are two areas that I would like to 
talk about here mm-hmm. because you-